Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and today we are taking a look at Skyscan26 Carry Me Golementalist. If you're looking for a character that can consistently take down bosses, has got a relatively consistent budget across the board, and is something that is easy to play with almost a no button clicking play style, then you can AFK all the blight maps that you ever want and take down the top end bosses of Path of Exile like Uber Elder and Cirrus Awakener 8, then this is the build for you. All of the relevant information for this particular build is going to be included down below in the video description, including this particular video footage that you are seeing behind my entirely bald forehead, as well as the path of building, along with the forum guide, which is all linked down below in the video description for your convenience. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive into Skyscan's Golemmentalist and take a look. Skyscan introduces the build by telling us the two different types of golems that we can play if we're interested in dealing physical damage, which that's primarily what this build is built around physical damage dealing golems. As such, our options are either the faster clearing carrion golem or the slower clearing but better bossing stone golem. One of the benefits of this build is being able to play it without having to necessarily micromanage a whole lot of extra buttons or extra clicks, because unlike many other various summoner minions or even simply active skills, golems simply won't die when you set them up properly. Therefore, you don't really need to click much except for your mobility skill in order to stay mobile and take down whatever content it is that you're tackling in Ray Class. The build features seven different golems and therefore boasts around 14 million DPS when you've got all of your golems up and they're all hitting the same target. Another benefit of the build is that this particular build doesn't require you to have high level awakener gems or even to use empower in order to make all of your golems as tanky and as DPS heavy as they need to be. Skyscan is upfront about the total cost of the build and it's relatively on the cheap side for a very heavily invested unique build. Now, as soon as I say that, I know some of you are gonna go, Iron, it, 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 it's not cheap. And some of you are gonna go, oh, that's terribly cheap. So I recognize that saying something is cheap or expensive is a relative term. The recommended budget by Skyscan is about 10 to 12x. You can go above that and spend as much as 15x, but Skyscan notes that you will notice substantial diminishing returns if you spend that amount of currency investing in this particular build. Part of the reason why you're going to see those substantial diminishing returns is simply because this build is so unique heavy that very often you're not scaling up your power by that much more once you've got the required uniques in place. Now, while on the pro side of playing this build, we've got the budget side of things, we've got the bossing side of things, and we've got the survivability side of things. On the con side of this build, this build is relatively slow, all right? So don't think that this build is going to win any lab races or anything like that. Even with the most optimal version of the build where you are using carrying golems to map clear, even at its fastest version, it's not going to be comparable to anything like a brand build or like an auto bomber build or even like, let's say, an archer build. This is not a clear speed build, but this is a build that will be able to be tanky enough that you can make mistakes and still survive in all of Ray Class varied content. Now we've already mentioned that there's two different golems that you can use for this build. You can use the more clear oriented carrion golems, or you can use the more bossing friendly stone golems. Let's take a look at each of these two golems in their descriptions as according to Skyscan and see exactly what scenarios you're gonna to wanna to choose which golems for. Golems have three types of attacks. They have a default attack, their special attack, and then they have a movement attack. So each type of golem will want to do different things. Therefore, let's take a look at what the stone golem wants to do first. They're by far the more complicated anyway. The stone golem wants to be taking advantage of their special attack slam as much as possible. Skyscan describes it this way. It's a circular AOE that does two times as much damage as their default attack and has a 33% chance to taunt. This ability has a four second cooldown and the second line of the Harmony Jewel, which we're gonna take a look at that in just a moment, can reduce the cooldown. This is why most golem builds stack lots of Harmony Jewels because not only does it give more minion damage, it also causes our stone golems to use their best attacks more often. 
Also, for those of you who have played zombies in the past, you know that multi-strike used to be very, very strong for the zombies slam attack, and multi-strike is the same thing here for stone golems. Multi-strike causes the ability to trigger two more times regardless of the ability's cooldown. That means that every time the slam is triggered, they will attack three times with that slam attack. With this interaction combined with enough harmony jewels, we can cause our golems to always use the slam ability, and that's what we're aiming for with the sum total of the build. So the general behavior of Stone Golem is to ask the question, is Slam ready? It's got a one second cooldown. Now in this particular picture and in this particular description, this is actually less than an ideal setup because of the way how the cooldown is going to work. You've got 0.3 seconds and then a slam, 0.3 seconds and then a slam, and then 0.3 seconds and then a slam. If you add those up, that's actually going to of course be less than one second, which means eventually we're going to get back to, is the slam ready yet? No, it's not quite ready yet. And therefore the stone golem is actually going to go into its default attack stance. We want to avoid that entirely. We want to hit a particular threshold where our stone golems are always using their special attack, never using their default attack, and always doing twice as much damage as they could be if they were only using their default attack. So Skyscan gives us a general principle here that's very, very helpful. When you are looking for the various unique jewels that you will need to cover this build in all of the golem glory that it could ever be, the general rule is for stone golems to use seven times the harmony jewel and two times the eminence jewel. That may change if you have minion attack speed on your gear, but if you don't have any minion attack speed on your gear, then that's the number that you're looking for. You want seven harmony and two eminence. That's the recipe for ensuring that your stone golems are always going to be using their slam attack, which is going to have that chance to taunt as well as the two times damage bonus. All right, so that's Stone Golem. By comparison, Carrion Golem is pretty simple. Carrion Golems are simply going to leap and then Cascade. That's what they're going to do. They either default attack, they leap slam, or they Cascade. So all you want to do on Carrion Golems is stack as much as attack speed as you can without worrying about any types of cooldowns. So if you heard that description about Stone Golems and you're like, oh, Iron, I don't really want to care about cooldowns and managing particular cycles and min-maxing the damage, then don't worry about it. Just play Carrion Golems and away you go. Now, I've mentioned a couple of different jewels a couple of different times, and so now is the point where we're actually going to break down each of these jewels individually. The number one jewel that you're going to want to know about is the Anima Stone. The Anima Stone is actually put together through a vendor recipe of one of each of the other unique primordial jewels being traded into a vendor. The benefits of having an Anima Stone are that it gives you plus one to maximum number of golems and then plus one to maximum number of summoned golems if you have three primordial items socketed or equipped. We are going to meet that conditional requirement of having at least three primordial items equipped or socketed. Therefore, this this particular stone is going to give us plus two to the maximum number of golems that we have. That's really, really important for a build that's scaling its damage and its defenses based on golems. Now, in order to acquire the Anima Stone, you've got to trade in those three unique Primordial Jewels. What are those jewels? The first is going to be Primordial Eminence. This grants you golems have 20% increased attack and cast speed, 30% increased effect of buffs granted by your golems. Golems have around 800 flat additional armor, and then it is a Primordial Jewel. That last line about Primordial is very, very important because remember that last line on the Anima Stone is that we've got to have socketed or equipped three three different primordial items. And so primordial eminence is one of the qualifying conditions of activating that second line of the Anima Stone. Primordial Harmony is another of the primordial jewels that you're looking for. It grants golem skills have 25% increased cooldown recovery speed, golems have 42% increased cooldown recovery speed, and 19% increased golem damage for each type of golem you have summoned. Summoned golems regenerate 2% of their life per second, and it's primordial. Remember, if you are playing stone golems, you want seven primordial harmonies in order to maximize your cooldown for your maximum amount of damage on your stone golem slam attack. The last primordial jewel that you're looking for is primordial might. This grants you increased damage if you've summoned a golem in the past eight seconds. We really don't care that much about that because we're not the ones dealing damage, but golems summoned in the past eight seconds deal 35% increased damage. That's a slight bonus if you want to summon a particular golem right before a boss fight, but for the most part, you're not caring about that too much. Golems also have 22% increased maximum life. Of course, it is a primordial jewel, but the important tagline on primordial might 
is that summoned golems are aggressive. This is very, very good and allows us to go from a passive playstyle where we are constantly struggling to actually get our golems to attack anything into a very active playstyle where our golems are running amok in every single map, taking out whatever it is that they can reach. So this is the means of acquiring the Anima Stone. You will need to trade in Primordial Eminence, Primordial Harmony, and Primordial Might in order to get an Anima Stone back. Of course, if you're playing in a trade league, you can simply just buy a regular Anima Stone as it is, but that's up to you whether or not you want to use the recipe or trade for it in a trade league. For those of you who are veterans, you recognize immediately that the reason why this particular build goes Elementalist is because Elementalists grant you additional maximum golems, which is very strong. You can get that with four ascendancy points, two additional maximum number of golems, by going with the Liege of the Primordial and then the Elemancer ascendancy nodes. But in addition to that, Elementalist also grants us some more buffs that are pretty sneaky and cool. Skyscan details exactly what those sneaky cool buffs are. Not only do we get plus two maximum golems from being elementalist, but this ascendancy also provides 50% golem buff effectiveness per summoned golem. Realize that this is not an effect that is an if, or, or binary, yes, no, this is per golem, you get golem buff effect. So, as Skyscan details in the guide, with the passive tree bonuses and the nine summon golems that we'll be playing with, we have 620% golem buff effectiveness. This means that these golems will give the following buffs. A level 27 stone golem will give you 1000 flat life regen. That's regardless of your max life total. Then a level 22 chaos golem will give you plus 32% flat physical damage reduction. That lets us get to that 90% physical damage reduction pretty easily. And then a level 20 lightning golem gives 62% increased attack and cast speed. So that way movement skills simply feel great on a single link and you don't have to set them up with a whole bunch of extra setups like faster casting or faster attacks. Now the buff effect bonus that we get is not dependent upon having all of the same type of golem in order for that buff effect to work. It's just general per golem that you have. So the example given, if you have eight fire golems and one chaos golem, that chaos golem will still give you 32% flat physical damage reduction. So this is why in the damage setup, you see that we're using seven golems for DPS and then two other golems for utility. And for those of you who are worried about damage, don't worry, Skyscan's got an answer. But wait, if we use other golems, then our main damage golem will do less damage, right? Harmony Jewels not only offset the loss of going from nine to seven max damage golems, but actually increase our overall damage. This is because we get 20% damage per type of golem summoned with seven times Harmony Jewels. That goes from 20% damage per jewel to 60% per jewel. So Skyscan wraps it up by saying, in sum, the Elementalist cares about the max number of golems that you can have and the buff effect of them, and then the Harmony Jewel cares about the number of different types of golems that you've got active. This is why the ideal distribution of golems is seven damage dealing and then two different types of golems for utility buff effect. The more essential uniques that you're looking for that are incredibly cheap are going to be to dual wield the Cold Iron Point Unique Dagger. Now, if you are dual wielding cold iron points, each cold iron point gives you plus three to all physical spell skill gems. This means that by dual wielding them, your stone golem, which is a physical golem, is getting plus six to its levels. So if you've got a corrupted level 21 or even a level 20 gem, you're automatically looking at at least a level 26 stone golem. Now that is a beefy stone golem. For Cluster Jewels, you're going to be looking for Rotten Claws. And Cluster Jewels are, of course, presently incredibly strong. And they're one of the reasons why we want to take full-on advantage of dealing physical-only damage at the moment. Skyscan gives us a brief history by saying it used to be that golems scaled up almost entirely from their golem-specific jewels. That meant that golem passive trees picked up 13-plus jewel sockets. Pathing to all those jewel sockets required us to spend a lot of points on dead passive nodes. What Cluster Jewels now do is replace those dead travel nodes with high minion damage nodes instead while still maintaining the same amount of jewel sockets. Rotten Claws gives us the bonus of having minions have a 20% chance to impale on hits 
with attacks. That is massive. If you use two Rotten Claws, Impale Support, and Dread Banner, we are going to have a 100% Impale chance for our Golems. Which, remember how for several leagues now, Impale Cyclone has been very, very strong and borderline OP broken? Well, guess what? We're now applying <laughs> Impale's borderline OP broken state, and we're slapping them on some Golems that are able to run around and do all the damage for us without putting us in harm's way. It's fantastic. Two more notable uniques that you should be paying attention to for this particular build are going to be in your boot slot and in your amulet slot. For boots, the stampede is fantastic because of this one particular line that's on it. It says, your movement speed is 150% of its base value. This means that you don't have to use a movement speed flask because your movement speed is already going better than what most builds, unless they're of course scaling up flask effectiveness, is going to be at using a move speed flask. So this is quite nice to give you a consistent amount of speed moving through maps and moving through ray class on your various adventures. Skyscan also gives us a neat little trick that because of the way how the stampede is worded, you can use cyclone and the downside of cyclone that you lose movement speed is actually not going to be there. There because the stampede guarantees your movement speed at a certain base level threshold. So if you want to use a cast while channeling setup, use the stampede and away you go. You don't have to worry about any of the movement speed downsides of cyclone plus cast while channeling as long as you're using the stampede. The second unique that you need to pay attention to for your amulet slot is going to be the primordial chain. The primordial chain grants you a very, very important line, which is plus three to maximum number of golems. That is a boatload of golems. If you don't have the primordial chain, then you're going to either have to choose on losing out on your DPS or losing out on your various utility golems that you are using that giving, are giving you all kinds of different buff effectiveness. So yes, while the primordial chain at first looks like it's got some downside like you reduce golem size and golems deal less damage and golems have less life. Overall, the plus three maximum number of golems that you can have increases again that number of buffs that we're going to get in buff effectiveness and it increases our DPS overall total because we've still got more golems that are out there actively dealing damage. So while you may at first look at the primordial chain and think, eh, maybe not for me, trust Skyscan's recommendation on using the primordial chain. It is amazing. Speaking of the Primordial Chain, the Primordial Chain is going to be very, very helpful if you are looking to level up using your endgame version of your skills as you are progressing through the 10 Act Story campaign of Rayclast. You can equip the Primordial Chain as early as level 34, and then of course you can go grab as many different socket spots as are available to you with your passive points in order to get one Anima, one Might, one Harmony, and then you go through the campaign on pretty much easy mode. Note that you don't need to have Eminence because the Primordial chain counts as a primordial item which means you simply have one primordial might one primordial harmony and that will activate that second line of the anima stone giving you an additional maximum golem for your main dps skill setup you're going to want to have summon stone golem for bosses or summon carrying golem for clear and then from there on out your supports remain the same you want to use brutality melee physical impale multi-strike and minion damage for your auras you're going to want to have flesh and stone with dread banner and then generosity also also linked with maim because maim and flesh and stone are simply fantastic together and then your last big aura is of course going to be pride which gives a massive amount of increased physical damage taken for any enemies that are inside that area for your curse setup, you can use Stormbrand with Curse on Hit and then Vulnerability or Punishment. Remember how we are using Cold Iron Points and each one grants plus three to levels? Yeah, this means that Vulnerability and Punishment respectively, because they're both physical skill gem tags, both get plus six to their level when we are using dual cold iron points. If enemies weren't getting erased by your golems already, just curse them and down they'll go. Well, thanks so much for joining us today as we took a look at Skyscan's Carry Me Golems, the Carrion Stone Golem Elementalist. Skyscan does a great job of updating and following through with any questions on the particular build guide thread. So if you've got questions, feel free to drop them down below, but also make sure you head on over to the build guide and ask there because Skyscan is sure to get back to you with a prompt response or somebody else has probably already asked a similar question throughout the history of the build guide thread. Thanks so much for watching and I hope today is the day that a mirror of Calandra drops for you and your golems. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.